Butterfly Chapter at Arkansas State University in Jonesboro in 1975. She is currently a member of the Mariana Area Alumni Chapter, a Diamond Life member, and has served as the Arkansas State Chaplain for the sorority since 2005. Sora Blanche is a native of Mariana, Arkansas, and was educated in the Lee County School System. She received her post-secondary education at Arkansas State University and Webster University. She is presently pursuing certification as a life coach. She was most recently employed with the Arkansas Department of Education as a public school program advisor for school districts in eastern Arkansas. She has also been employed with Great Rivers Educational Cooperative and Arkansas Department of Human Services. After 32 years of employment with the state of Arkansas, Sora Bland retired in October 2011. She has been married to Vandell Bland Sr. for 33 years, and they have two sons and one grandson. Sora Bland is also a founding member and co-laborer along with her husband at Manasseh Christian Fellowship Church in West Helena. Please join me in welcoming Sora Bland. you. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory for the things he has done. I'm so grateful to be here this evening. I just thank God for his goodness and allowing us travel mercies to make it here to Sora President Landria King in her absence, to uh, Sora Jacoby Webb, to Sora Jasmine Reed, and your committee, to all the advisors of this wonderful chapter, to all the lovely ladies of the Mu Kappa chapter of Delta Sigma Theta, to all of my sorors who are present, to all of the visitors on tonight. There's no place, Crystal, I'd rather be than right here today celebrating uh, the founding of the greatest sorority in the world. That's Delta Sigma Theta. And to all of the visitors, in case you haven't heard, this is the year yeah. of Delta Sigma Theta. Oh, yeah. This is our centennial year, and we are happy to celebrate 100 years of transforming lives and impacting communities. And chapters all over the world are honoring the 22 young women who could not and would not be satisfied with the status quo. All right. They could not be satisfied with si sipping and snacking and meeting and greeting. But they look for a sorority with broader views. Yeah. Broader views, and they felt that would be more oriented to serve than to socialize. Yes. Their vision ignited a flame that resulted in the establishment of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated on January 13, 1913, and the world has never, never ever been the same. Yes, yes. Little did they know that 100 years later, their legacy, their legacy would include over 300,000 women working in their communities and on their college campuses to broaden the scope of their vision by building on and creating programs that would continue to meet the needs of the historically underserved. Yes, this is the year of Delta Sigma Theta. Yeah. A year that we not only celebrate the vision to charter, but we celebrate the fortitude to sustain what was chartered. Now, when an organization remains viable over a period of time in management, they call that steady power. Well, we take pride in Delta Sigma Theta in knowing that we have defined the odds and stayed the course for 100 years. Society might imply, you see, that our success as an organization is a fluke, a mere case of happenstance because we're not wired to manage and do not possess the ability to manage the ebb and flow of resources and change that's inevitable in any organization. Society might also imply that an organization as large as ours comprised primarily of African American women would allow pettiness and competition to creep in and allow us to self-destruct. But that's what society said. But I said, never, never ever underestimate the power of a woman, especially a black woman and a member of Delta City of Vegas, Sorority. 
and never will be able to define who we are or what we're capable of. In Delta Sigma Theta, we continue to shock and amaze the world. Instead of self-destructing, we have grown exponentially and excelled in every field imaginable. From education to science, from science to government, from government to entertainment, we are entrepreneurs. We are aspiring entrepreneurs. We are CEOs, CFOs, EDDs, JDs, MDs, PhDs. Uh, we are MBAs, and some of us are just MA, MAs. But the, it's still the same thing we've helped to shape the world. We are a sisterhood that will not allow stereotypes to define us, and we will not be boxed in by stereotypical thinking. We have stayed power. And for that, we give God the glory. You see, we've been blessed to have programs that remain fresh and relevant in our communities and on a global basis. Our relevance is maintained by keeping our ears low to the ground to hear the heartbeat of a people who do not have a voice to speak. Our relevance is maintained by keeping our eyes open for legislation and laws that negatively impact our people and by fighting to have them changed by any means necessary. Our relevance is maintained by keeping our hands open, ready to give, ready to give our time and our money if need be to get causes greater than ourselves. Our relevance is maintained by keeping our legs toned and limber, ready to walk and to work to ensure that the mission of Delta Sigma Theta is implemented through our programmatic thrust. Our staying power can be partially attributed to the knowledge that we must exercise humility and we must exercise discipline in order to continue moving forward into the next 100 years and by knowing that if we move forward, we do so together with our personal agendas and without haterism because they only serve to eat away at the core of our existence, causing us to take our eyes off of our primary purpose, and that is public service. So this year, the year of Delta Sigma Theta, our collective chest swell with pride and our staying power, but our anticipation is building at the prospect of what the future holds during the next 100 years. And although our communities have been made better because of our efforts, this is no time to gloat with past accomplishments because there are still trails to be blazed and new paths that we must take to ensure that our people are not disenfranchised and to ensure that when wolves enter into our communities wearing sheep's clothing, that we have the presence of mind, that we have the courage to expose them for what they truly are. My sorrows and my friends. In these next 100 years, our purpose and our change is clear. We move forward with the impetus of the 22, but with renewed vigor and renewed determination because there's too much at stake for us to allow our diversities to polarize us and to allow our past accomplishments to paralyze us. And so as we enter the next 100 years, we must do more. Our mantra must be more. We must do more. There's so much more to do as we continue to analyze why African Americans continue to make up half of the new AIDS cases each year, suffer from diabetes twice as often as our white counterparts, and are more likely to die from cancer or heart disease. We must do more. We must do more to understand and find solutions to why it is that nationally black babies are more likely than twice as likely as white babies to die before their first birthday. We must do more as we enter into the next 100 years. We must work to answer why it is that in a nation that is the wealthiest and one of the most developed in the world that there are still people who cannot read. There are still people who don't have access to affordable housing and those making minimum wage live below the poverty level. We must do more. Satisfaction with the accomplishment of the first 100 years must not 
lull us into complacency, but provide us with unfettered determination as we continue to pursue why it is that students of color are overrepresented in, in special education and underrepresented in classes for the gifted and talented, particularly in fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and why African American males continue to be overrepresented in the criminal justice system. We must do more. There is still so much more to do. But are we up for the challenge? I'm glad you asked. Yes, we are. Are we up for the challenge? Yes, we are. Why? Because we are deltas. We are groundbreakers. We're movers and shakers and we're policy makers. Inspired by the vision of the 22 forward-thinking, courageous women, who did not wait for change, but initiated it. Are we up for the challenge? Yes, we are. Why? Because we are deltas. We're strong, we're educated, women of excellence and women of commitment, committed to improving ourselves and those in our sphere of influence. Are we up for the challenge? Yes, we are. Why? Because we are deltas. We're mothers, daughters, sisters, nieces, cousins, and friends. We are supporters, motivators, and communicators. Dynamic, spectacular, and tenacious. We don't stop until the job gets done. Yeah. Are we up for the challenge? Yeah. Yes, we are. Because we are deltas. We're more than a strut, and we're more than a step. Oh we're more than a shirt, and we're more than a license tip. Are we up for the challenge? Yes, we are. Because we are deltas. We are a sisterhood called to serve, transforming lives and impacting communities, propelled by our mission, and in the next 100 years, positioned to be a blessing wherever we are planted. Mu Catholic Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I say to you, Stay focused, be blessed, and move forward with purpose. Why? Because we are deltas. God bless you.